But I think the positioning is clear that uh, the big guys want to go long in the fall. And again, the the downgrade of the U.S. Treasuries by Fitch and the warning that they're about to downgrade the big commercial banks in the U.S. is basically pointing to the fact that we have a higher risk of credit default and maybe even a an eventual sovereign default of the U.S. government coming. And so I think that's why they're positioning to go long, because if, if any of that happens, then we're going to have pretty massive moves up in the gold and silver price. In recent discussions, Robert Keats of Gold Silver Pros sheds light on significant developments in the precious metals market, suggesting a potential shift in the stance of banks and investors towards gold and silver. One pressing concern highlighted by Keats is the growing unease about the ability of the U.S. government to meet its debt obligations. This concern gained traction when Fitch ratings downgraded U.S. debt from AAA to AA+, citing factors such as fiscal deterioration and escalating government debt. This downgrade has raised concerns within the U.S. banking industry, with the potential for significant rating downgrades for numerous banks, including major players like J.P. Morgan Chase. Keynes opines that this environment of uncertainty is likely to drive up the prices of gold and silver. The bullion banks are adjusting their positions in gold and silver, anticipating price increases in the coming months. Recent price dips allowed them to cover short positions and transition to long futures contracts without losses. Keynes explains that this is a typical market strategy, indicating future price optimism. He reassures that the recent minor drop in metals value isn't a lasting concern. Additionally, banks closing short positions in gold and silver imply a desire for profits and possibly aiding like-minded investors. Just before you watch the Robert Keynes' interview and learn more about market trends, consider subscribing to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Fitch still forecasts a mild recession in the U.S. in Q4 2023 and Q1 2024. China is dealing with a big financial problem within its own borders. Keynes suggests that these factors are increasing worries about the economy. This data is always a week old because it, it's on the Commitment of Treasuries report that the regulator, the CFTC, puts out. So the latest data has through August 8th. So, you know, we're about 10 days behind. But on that report in both gold and silver, they had dumped uh, basically a lot of their short positions. As I look at it, through August 8th, they had dumped 12,500 silver short positions, and they were slightly net long on silver. And then they also dumped about 15,700 uh, short gold positions. Now, they still have a much bigger short on gold. They're, as of August 8th, they're still sitting at 230,000 short contracts. So gold is going to take a lot longer to unwind, but it appears as though they're anxious to unwind some of that gold and silver. Now, when I first reported on this, I suspected that they were probably positioned to go long in the fall. And I still think they are, especially in silver. There, there's enough dumping of those shorts that they're slightly above net even or slightly net long, if you will, that that I don't think that they're about to then go add a bunch of shorts again. But we've had some price weakness lately. And without looking at the new commitment of trades report, which probably won't be out until this afternoon, I suspect that they're probably adding some some shorts. And so what they did essentially is they they dropped some short positions to short cover, whether it be their own positions or some positions that the managed money hedge funds had. So it's it's them basically taking profit on the market and helping their financial you know buddies take a little bit of profit on the market. But the moves were so big, I do think it's not just that. It is positioning to go long in the fall. I'll, I'll warn people though, however, we could still have some downward drift in prices. Gold finally this week drifted below its 200 day moving average on the technical charts, which is a slightly bearish sign. Uh, gold right now is trading you know, around 1900. Um, do I expect gold to fall to 1700? No, because of the economic fundamentals. But, you know, the banks can kind of play this game for a while. So they may go and do some more short covering again. And, you know, you could see the fade in the price. But I do think that that was a signal. So many contracts at once in both gold and silver that really they wanted to dump, take their profit and begin to slowly move long into it. And I think that they're doing that because they're seeing what we're seeing with regards to the banks and wages and all of that stuff, type of stuff that we're going to talk about today, meaning the economic fundamentals are deteriorating so badly now, and not only in the U.S., but also in China. China's basically right now, their uh, debt markets and a lot of their state-owned entities, their quasi-governmental uh, entities are in, in pretty serious trouble. And I think the banks see that. They read the writing on the wall. Uh, I think Fitch even came out and said when they warned about downgrading uh, the bank's credit ratings, the big commercial banks, 
uh, they met, that Fitch basically called for a recession in quarter four. So I think the writing's on the wall that we're headed straight to a recession. And so I think what I see on the COMEX and on the, the derivatives and futures markets is the banks are starting to move net long. Now, I do think that they're going to kind of step into it, you know, but eventually they're going to be positioned long so that when, you know, that that big rush into gold and silver comes, which I don't think is going to be too awful far from now, they're going to be well positioned for that. If you look at it, they've had such short or huge short positions in gold and silver for so long, that size of position to me means that they dumped a bunch of that long term position. That doesn't mean they can't add a few more shorts, but they're not going to add 15,000 uh, more shorts in a week. What they're doing is they're gradually removing big chunks of shorts where they can without losing a bunch of money. And they're basically handing those losses to the rest of the market. So I think this is the beginning of their big move. I think given the issues in the economy, uh, that fade hasn't been nearly as strong in retail as I would have thought that typically happens during the summer. So I think there's a lot of signs pointing to people being a lot more bullish. And I think last time we talked about how the millennials are buying so much gold in the ETF. So overall, I think we're pretty healthy in this market. During times of economic uncertainty, Keynes emphasizes the significance of possessing substantial gold reserves to back national currencies. Currently, the United States holds the largest gold reserves worldwide, totaling 8,133.47 metric tons. Managed by the U.S. Department of the Treasury and the Federal Reserve System, these reserves play a vital role in upholding the stability of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency, thereby bolstering the nation's economic foundation. Keynes points out that China and Russia are actively increasing their gold reserves. China's gold reserves grew from 2068.36 to 2113.46 metric tons in the second quarter of 2023, while Russia's holdings rose from 2326.52 to 2329.63 metric tons during the same period. Additionally, various states within the United States are considering adopting gold-backed currencies. Keynes suggests that possessing gold or silver can act as a safeguard against potential bank failures and economic crises. Let's get back to the interview. The only backstop, it's not the U.S. dollar, it's gold. Whoever has the most gold is going to win this little battle. Whoever has the most gold that they can bring out to back their national currency is going to be the big winner here because it's going to be gold backstopping because nobody's going to buy treasury debt. Nobody's going to buy Chinese treasury debt. Nobody's going to want the U.S. dollar or even the renminbi in China. Why would you? If you have a collapsing economy, you're going to go buy a bunch of their currency and their debt? No, you're not. It, it's, it's paper value. They're going to go to gold. So if China ha and, and Russia have more gold reserves, they'll do better. I think that's what's going to happen. Ultimately, when this all comes down to it, it's going to be who has the most gold. I know that the BRICS countries led by China and Russia are doing their gold-backed currency. They've been talking about it for a long time. It's, it, it, the big announcement is supposed to come, I, I think, the 22nd. But, but honestly, it's a foregone conclusion. We've known for years that they were planning this because leaks came out, analysts said it. I mean, we didn't know, but we suspected. And why wouldn't you? What else are you going to back it with? Um, not only that, Zimbabwe's got one going. We're seeing states here in the United States propose gold and silver as tender. We're seeing states uh, have bills proposed to do their own gold-backed digital currencies on a state-by-state. -state like, when's the last time we had state currencies in our history? You know, uh, especially gold-backed. I mean, you got to go way back in time to see anything even remotely like that in our history. So not only is the rest of the world lining up behind gold, but a lot of states are lining up behind gold. I don't know what the federal government's doing. They say they have about 8,000 tons. But, you know, do they really? We haven't had an audit in 60-some years. You know, if, if you're if you're an individual out there and you're looking at this, man, you cannot expect the government's going to be able to save you. We're going to have massive bank failures. And the only way to save yourself, I think, is to go into gold. And if you can't afford gold, go to its little brother, silver, uh, which is, you know, the poor man's gold, uh, because that's the only way you're going to save yourself. I think that's the only way you're going to capture value. And when all of this collapses, it's a big, you know, if you look at Extra's pyramid, all the derivative stuff is sitting up here. And then you have a little bit of gold and silver here on the little bottom. All that value, that notional value of all the derivatives, all the currencies, all the stock market, all the crap paper in the system is going to go right down to gold and silver. And you're going to see the value of gold and silver go this way. And that's the way you stay solvent. This is how you win the game. You go to the assets that have the best value. Uh, the asset of last resort, which is gold and silver. So when that house of card collapses in on itself, you're left standing with the highest value asset. That makes you the king. 
Okay, and you can be a king in your own life by holding precious metals in your portfolio. And certainly countries that have been buying a lot of gold and silver will end up as the kings on top of everything when all of this is said and done. In the ever-evolving landscape of the precious metals market, the shifting focus towards gold and silver seems to mirror a broader sentiment of caution and preparation in the face of economic uncertainties. What are your thoughts on the recent developments in the precious metals market? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to be notified for future videos. Currently, 93% of viewers haven't subscribed yet. Help us reach 2,000 subscribers.